How's it going, church? Good morning, morning, morning. Let's pray. Jesus said that my house will be the house of prayer. And so let's uh, spend some time in God's presence. I know we have uh, through worship. Father God, thank you so much, God. You are alive, God. And you speak to our hearts, God. You can change us from the inside out, God. You're not, you don't want us to become religious, God. You don't want to just have a bunch of sets of, of rules and, and regulations, God. It's all up about our hearts, God, about loving you and loving others, God. And so, Jesus, Father God, would you fill us up with your Holy Spirit today, God? Would you prepare our minds and our hearts, God, to hear from you, God? In Jesus' name, we pray for the kids upstairs, God, God that they, through their coloring and video and the Bible verse they're learning today, God, that they would encounter you just like the way we want to encounter you through worship, God, and through the message. We pray that our kids will have their encounters with you, Father, because we're not teaching them again in religion, God. We're teaching them how to live, you know, in, in, in fellowship with the living God. And so be with them. Be with us, God. Speak to us loud and clear. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody says... Amen and amen. We are continuing our studies that we called pillars. And the pillars are the, the five biggest things in Christianity for sure. We're trying to narrow to how can we keep Christianity simple. And, and we talked about it's about this up relationship with God. The Bible calls this worship. And then we talked about uh, this in relationship that we should have with one another, that the Bible calls it fellowship, that, that the church is not, do you mind closing the door for me, please, Joe, thank you, uh, that the church is not really uh, a place that, that we go to, the church is really a family that we belong, and if we want to grow, you know, that we have to surround ourselves with people that are going the same direction that, that we are. Then the third pillar, that's the one we were talking about right now. So the first one was the up relationship with God. The second one was the in relationship with the church. And the third one, the third pillar, we've been talking about it for like three or four weeks now. It's the in our hearts work of the Holy Spirit. That's the work of, of God in our hearts that he wants us to grow. He wants us to mature. He wants us to, in a, in a nutshell, to have the qualities of Christ in our lives. And we're all learning how to do that. We're all learning to be imitators of Christ. We're all learning to love like Christ, to forgive like Christ, to relate with people like Christ. And so that's the work that God calls the, the discipleship. That's the, the work of God in our hearts so that we can be now his re representatives here on planet earth. And today we're going to uh, talk about this one last aspect of, of the verse that we found in 2 Peter 1 verses 5 through 8. And, and we read the following a couple of weeks ago. And it's the following. It says, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness. To goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection. We'll be talking about this today, mutual affection. And to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. That God doesn't want us, in a nutshell, to have a faith that sits in our heart, but it's unproductive, that's not producing any fruit, that is not changing anything. God wants that our faith in the, in the Christ Messiah, the Savior, will make an impact, will bring out fruit. And so to be able to bring out these fruits, the Bible says, add to your faith. Goodness, we, we talked about that, that goodness are actions, that it's not only about having a faith, but it's about having a faith that moves our arms. To, to, our, to goodness, add knowledge, and we have to know the knowledge of God. We have to know Christ. If we're imitating someone, we have to know this person that we're imitating. Correct, church? 
So far, so good? So add to your faith goodness, to your goodness, knowledge. To knowledge, add self-control. And we talked about it like three weeks ago. That is the power of the Holy Spirit in us that enables us to say yes to the things of God and no to the things that tempt us that are not going to be beneficial to us or beneficial to others. Then we talked about last week, add to your faith perseverance. And today, we're finishing this up. That is, how are we growing to be like Jesus? He says this thing, I want you to add to your faith mutual affection, and I want you to add to your faith love. The interesting thing that if we read in Greek, it really says, I want you to add to your faith brotherly love, Phileo, that's why Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love. The word phileo means brother and sisterly love. I want you to add, if you want to be effective in your faith, if you want to see the results of your life, of faith in your life, add to your faith brotherly love. And to brotherly love, add divine love, agape meaning love like God loves. And that's what we'll be talking about here today. You know, one thing that I love about God is that God is a simplifier. Uh, really, following Jesus is not that complicated, church. It really isn't. I'll give you an example. Kids, when the kids are growing up, God gave us Ephesians 6, 1 and 2, which is simple. To keep simple to kids, the Bible says, you know, honor and obey father and mother that you have a long life and you'll be blessed it's that simple kids obey god obey mom and dad and respect them because when you do that it's like mom and dad are now kind of like representing god as you learn to honor and obey mom and dad once you go to college you learn how to honor and obey god so god keeps it very simple it's not that complicated. And, and what, I, what I saw that it's a beautiful thing is that when a religious person came to Jesus and asked Jesus, Jesus, what's the most important thing of the Bible? What is the greatest of all the commands? There were more than 600 commands, church, in the Old Testament. And he's just asking, what's the most important one? And let's read it together. In Mark 12, 28, the guy asks, and he says, All of all the commandments, which one is the most important? And in 12, 30 to 31, Jesus answered, and he said the says the following. He says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And the second is, love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus, it's so brilliant what he's doing here, church. He's simplifying the entire Bible with love God and love your neighbors as you love yourself. And this is huge what's happening here because at that moment, and it happens in our generation sometimes too, but at that moment, people thought that if they were good with God, they were okay. But what Jesus is saying here, it's like, no, it, you have to be good with God, but you have to good, be good with people. Meaning, love God and love others like you like to be loved. Treat others like you like to be treated. And this was revolutionary. Because some people were like, I know the Bible more than you. I read the Bible more than you. I pray more than you. And, and, and to them, the religious people, it was almost like a past. To be jerks. And people be like, but do you see how you're treating that person right there? But hey, I read the Bible more than you. Are you judging me? And, and Jesus is putting it all together. They ask, what's the most important command? Even though it seems like he's giving two, but he's actually giving one. He says, the one that's most important is you love God with your mind, heart, soul, and strength. And then he's like, and the second is, love others. As you love yourself. He's simplifying Christianity right here. That we should love God with our mind. And this is important. Our mind means that we need to know 
again, over and over, I'll tell you, we need to know the word of God because we want to love God with our heart and our mind. My saying is, the more we know God, the more we're going to love God, for sure. The more we're going to know God, he's an infinite God. The more we know God, the more we're going to love him because we're only going to know more of his goodness, more of his grace, more of his mercies, more of his kindness, more of everything that God is. So he's simplifying the Bible, and it's brilliant what he's doing. Christianity is not that complicated, church. Add to your faith love. Love for real people. That's what he's saying. Love for God and love for real people. Love is the trademark of a Christian and love is the main ingredient in Christianity. Love is the trademark. Remember Jesus said, he came to the disciples and says, love one another because by this they will know that you are my followers if you love one another. You know how people are going to know that you're Christians? It's not because we speak Christianese. It's not because, because we have shirts that say this. and Nothing against shirts. Nothing against all of that, this stuff. It's not because we have bumper stickers. It's not because we, we say how many hallelujahs or how many this or that we say or mercy or, or whatever. It's none of that. That's Christianese. He says, they will know my disciples when they see love. That's the trademark of a Christian. So my hope every Sunday is that, we, yes, we do come to church and we do go to life groups. Why? So that we're learning more about God, get closer to God. God is love. We're being filled with love so that we can just go and overflow love to every environment that we go to. Are you seeing what I'm seeing, church? That's the, the whole goal, the whole goal. Luis, welcome back, man. Love you, bro. You know, it's not the whole goal of learning the Bible. It's not the whole goal of church attendance. You know, it's not. I'm good with God. I haven't missed church now in 2019. I'm good. It's like, God is like saying, you know the trademark? The trademark will be love. How much you love me and how much you love real people with real love. That's the trademark, but it's also the main ingredient. You know the main ingredient? We read it in, in weddings, you know, God, God is love, the whole Corinthians 13. But if you see in, in that passage, he says, you can have all the gifts. You can speak in tongues of men and tongues of angels. You can prophesy. You can know all the wisdom of the entire world. But if you don't have love, you're nothing. You can give your body to be burned and give everything that you possess to the poor. But if you don't do it with love, that's like nothing. Nothing. It's the main ingredient and it's the trademark. You know the trademark? They will know that we are Christians by our love. By our love. They will know we are Christians by our love. You remember that song? I'm dating myself, maybe. Okay. <laughs> we will walk hand in hand. We will walk side by side. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk side by side. Because they will know we are Christians. Not by shirts. Not by stickers. Not by Christianese. But by our love. <laughs> are you with me, church? The main ingredient, and it's the trademark. Love is a verb. We can, I can talk about love forever, right? Because love is a choice, love is a feeling, but love is a verb. This one is the verb. Because it is a transitive verb. What does that mean? Some verbs, they don't have, they don't need any completing. If you say, I run you know exactly what I'm doing, right? I put shoes and I do this. If I say I love, it begs the question, what or who? See, it needs to transition to something else. So when he's saying add to your faith, 
phileo love, mutual love, brotherly love, and add to your faith God, divine love. It's really connecting to people, to God and to people because it transitions. Love is a transitive verb. So it's not like, I, I know sometimes we get a little lost in this because we think this love is just this vague concept. Oh, I love, I love, I love. The, the question is, how are we loving? How are we loving one another in the church? Add to your faith brotherly love and sisterly love. How are we practically loving one another, real people with real names and real stories? How? It's not enough to say, I love you, even though I love saying I love you. But it's like, how do I love you? You see, it is a verb. It's not only a feeling. It's not something that we just say. And so when he's saying, add to your faith, if you want to be productive, if you want to be productive, if you want to see fruits in your life, if you really want to grow, add to your faith brotherly love. And so that's why we need to know our brothers and sisters. And that's why we need to get involved one way or another in the church. That's why, because we're really loving real people here. It's not just I love, like a vapor. I love. You love who, what, when, where, and how are you loving? Are you with me, church? So if you want to be, thank you, Louise. If you want to be effective in your faith, here's the one thing that the Bible is telling us. Would you love your brothers and your sisters in the church with phileo love, with brotherly love, get to know one another, get involved in each other's lives. We're not just, and even, even if you're visiting out of, you're not from San Diego, you're just visiting, we get a lot of that here on Sunday. That applies to you too. Wherever you're going back to, the same thing. Love the people in your church with real love, with real service, with real kindness, we really like maybe a meal train, be part of it, be part of the loving action kind of thing that it should be happening, in, not just in our hearts, but also moving our arms and moving our mouth. Are you with me, church? If you want to be effective in your life, add to your faith, to your faith brotherly love. A real love with that loves real people. Now, what Jesus is doing here, I don't know if you realize, it's something that is beautiful. At the end of his ministry, he's pretty close to dying, and he comes to the disciples and he says this one thing. Let's read it together. In John 13, 34. This is revolutionary. He says, guys, a new command I give you Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. They were probably asking Jesus. Remember in the beginning of the ministry, we asked you, somebody asked you what was the most important thing in Christianity, and you said, love God and love others. Why are you saying a new command I give you now? What's new about this? And the new thing, this is, this is key right here. If you forget everything that I say, just remember this one thing. He says, I want you to love one another as I have loved you. He's taking the golden rule of treat others like you like to be treated to a brand new level. He's saying not just treat others like you like them to treat you. Treat others like I treat you. Be compassionate to others as I am compassionate to you. Be merciful to others as I am merciful to you. Be kind to others as I am kind to you. Forgive others as I forgave you. Why should I forgive? Why should I be kind and compassionate? The Bible tells us why. Ephesians 
4.32, it says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Why should we forgive and why should we be kind and why should we be compassionate? Because now we're in the business of, check this out, beautiful thing, giving to others everything we receive from God. Everything. And he's pretty much saying to this, to, to the disciples, he's saying, Peter, do you remember when you said, everyone's going to leave you, but I'm never going to forsake you? Kind of like saying that you're the best Christian in the whole world. And then you denied me three times? Yes, Lord. I want you to love people that think they are better than others with my love. Because at one point, you thought you were better than others. There's going to be people at work that they think they are better than others. And our call, the call of God to our lives here today, it's not to select who we're going to love. It's to really love even the people that are not like us and people that really we don't like. Are you with me? And so he's like, God, I want you to love the people that think that they're better than you. Because you know what? To be honest with you, under that layer of protection, there's a human being that also gets a stomach flu just like you. Under that layer of superiority or, or whatever, I'm better than you, I have more money than you, there's a person that has a need to be loved. Are you with me, church? Then he's going to Thomas. Thomas, do you remember when you had all the questions and all the doubts? That's why they even nicknamed you the Doubting Thomas. Hey, if you have questions about God, hey, you're welcome. Welcome in our church. We welcome people with questions because Jesus welcomed Thomas. Are you with me? So there's going to be people in your, in your workplace and people in the church, people in your life group with all kinds of questions. Remember, Thomas, how I loved you. Even you didn't believe you were the skepticals of the skepticals. Remember? Remember that? Yes, sir. I remember, Lord. Yes, I want you to love one another as I have loved Thomas. Remember, you guys saw me. You saw me. Remember when the lady was committing adultery, and she was cheating on her husband, and everybody wanted to stone her and kill her. Remember? Remember? Remember what I did? Remember what I did? I was not against her. Remember? I was for her. And I said, hey, if any of you don't have any sins, you can, you can throw the first stone, and everybody left. Remember how I treated her? Yeah, I want you to love people that are making bad choices in their lives, but I want you to love them just like I love that lady that was committing adultery. Are you, are you seeing the beauty of this? That loving real people with real issues that may be very different than us, People that had nothing like us. Jesus had nothing like Peter, had nothing like Matthew, had nothing like all of those guys. Let's be real. But he loved people that were different than him. Matthew, remember, you're cheating everyone. Remember, you're cheating your fellow Jews. You're double taxing them. So that you could make more money, you're cheating on your taxes, you're backstabber. Matthew, you were a backstabber. Jesus didn't say that, okay? But that's what it's implied, okay? You're backstabbing your people, remember? And I called you, and I said, come and follow me. What I was doing, I was loving you. Now, love as I have loved you. You're going to know people that are making all kinds of bad mistakes and bad choices. You're going to, it's part of being in the world. Because we also make some bad choices. Amen, church? Amen. None of us are void of that. But Jesus is saying, I want you to love them, love one another like I love Matthew. Peter, remember, you're a fisherman. It's not like you, you had college, you had a master's degree. You're a fisherman. You knew how to do this and this. This and this. There's going to be people at, at whatever, your workplace, that they don't, may not have the same degrees that you do. They may not be as smart as you are. I want you to love them just like I love Peter. Love one another as I have loved you. You see, it's taking to a brand new 
next level. Remember Nathaniel. Nathaniel says, is there anything good that comes from Nazareth? Mocking Jesus, mocking Christianity. There's going to be people around us that they will mock Jesus. They will mock God. They will say, where is your God? Are you going through a hard time? Where is your God? We've done that too. Jesus is saying, I want you to love like I loved Nathaniel. When he was mocking. When he was making fun. Remember Nathaniel? Yes, Lord, I remember. Love as I have loved you. Man, it's taking the golden rule to a next, next level. Now, God's calling us to love real people with real actions. And it's going to be hard. But through the strength of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we can do everything. Amen, church? There's going to be people that needs, they, we need extra grace to be able to love them. Some people are harder to love than others. But God is calling us to love as we are recipients of his love, as he has loved us. I just want to finish with this one word of caution because I've seen Christians being taken advantage of because we're called to love, we're called to love, we're called to love, and we become easy prey to people that want to take advantage of us. And then we become easy prey to people that want to manipulate us. And that's not what the Bible's teaching at all. We love. But at the moment that love becomes a guilt trip, check this out. I hope you learn this for the rest of your life. People guilt trip you into doing something that's not love anymore. That's not love anymore. You're doing something out of a guilt. You see? Anytime people try to manipulate or force you into doing something and you fall for that, that's not love anymore because love comes out of our hearts. It doesn't come when, and that's why I personally never do this. Please never, never, never do this. Never, ever, ever do this. Get the Bible, get a Bible verse and use against a person. Never go like, ah, the Bible says you should do this. And don't, don't. Don't go like wives. Oh, you, you should love me like Christ. Don't, don't do that. That's a call to the husbands to respond to Christ. He, he's supposed to respond to Christ in loving his wife as, as, as Christ loved the church. Husbands should never say, never, ever, ever say, you got to respect me. Because that's what the Bible says. No, no, no. That's a call to ladies that they should respond to the call of God. And if they want to do it because they want to do it for God, at the moment we're doing because people are forcing us to do it, it's not love anymore. Are you seeing this? You're feeling forced, manipulated into doing something. And so here's the word of caution. Know the difference between loving real people with real actions, loving the, your real church that has real people and real needs and, and real kids that need to be ministered, real coffee that needs to be made, real security that needs to be protected, that has real needs with real people. Yes. But the caution is have boundaries. Don't let people manipulate you. When I got saved... I was in college, and my roommate decided he was going to move out of San Diego. And he literally came to me and said, hey, you're all Christian now, love, right, love, love, love. He didn't say that, but that was all implied. That was all implied in this statement. He says, I'm moving back home in six months. I'm like, cool, all right. And what I want, Julian, is to live here for free for six months, and not just me, me and my girlfriend, because we want to save money to go back home with money. Uh-uh. Not going to happen, bro. 
This house has two bedrooms. You pay half. I pay half. Do you think I have money to pay for two, now three people? I'm in college, bro. But aren't you a Christian? You see? You see what he did? Don't tell me you're a Christian now because you're supposed to love me and help me. I love you and I help you. But here, you have to pay half of the rent. You see the difference? Please love real people with real love and real actions. Add to your faith brotherly love, that is love in the church. And then add to your faith agape, that is love for the entire world, that is divine love from God, that is for the entire world. Yes, love people, but don't allow them to manipulate your love. Because at the time they do that, it's no longer love. It's manipulation. And if we do it out of guilt trip, yeah, apparently a Christian needs to do that. No. Don't fall for it. Amen. Is that clear? Can you see the difference? If you have any questions, come talk to me after the service. Amen, church. Here's the bottom line. Jesus comes and says, a new command I give to you. They already. A new command. We had two now. Love God, love people. What's the new command? Apparently there's three now. Love one another as I have loved Peter, as I have loved Thomas with all his questions. Peter has a hot head, thinking that he's holier than thou attitude. I want you to love, you know, uh, as I love Matthew when he's cheating, when, when he was cheating. I want you to love Peter as, as illiterate, probably. I don't know. No, he wrote. He wrote the book, so he wasn't illiterate, but not that smart. And anyways, love everyone with real love and real actions and then when we do that that's when we're going to see our faith being productive and produce fruit in our lives and in the lives of others amen church let's bow our head and let's pray